Hi, this is Debbie from Soikan. You're watching Trucker Josh with his friend Diesel. Enjoy the show. Good morning from a familiar site, the shop. How you guys doing? I gotta find a place for these when I get back later. I'm gonna leave these right here front and center so I don't forget. Got this uh, calendar from that guy with the Kenworth cab over. You guys all remember him, right? From the truck show at Truck World. Gotta hang this up. There it is right there. Beautiful, beautiful truck. And I also am keeping safe in this calendar a very special picture that someone drew for me. Brought all the way to Truck World to give to me. How cool is that? His name is Dayton. Sorry, <laughs> he is from Drayton. His name is Joel. Sorry, Joel, got your name mixed up with your town name there for half a second. Don't worry, we, we figured it out. <laughs> His name's Joel. And he's from Drayton, Ontario. And he says, hey, Josh, I hope you like this. Does it look like your truck? Because it's supposed to. It sure does. It actually looks better than my truck. Look at that hood. Nice, long, classic Peterbilt hood. It's even got my unit number up at the top there. That is awesome. That's going up on the wall here. It's got a flatbed trailer behind him. I'm gonna find a perfect spot on a wall here somewhere, maybe front and center, so that every day when I come to my shop, I can see it. And then you'll see it in my vlogs too, in the background, but it'll be right there, probably. We're gonna decide after work today. I've gotta get going, because I gotta get trucking, but it's gonna be right in here in this calendar, so, it keep, so it's safe. Put that right there, grab these gloves. I'm off to work, it's back to trucking. We had lots of fun at Truck World, but you know, real life always has to come back around and we have to get back to work. It's gonna be a van hauler today. We're looking for van trailer 5058. We're gonna pull it down to Thief River Falls, USA. It is full in the yard here. I hope I'm not gonna have to dig it out from behind all these trailers. Yikes, what's going on here? 50, 58, man, there's just trailers everywhere. 50, 58, please don't be in the back corner there. Please don't be in the back corner. Okay, good, I don't have to dig it out. I'd only have to move one trailer, but. 50, 58, do you guys see 50, 58 anywhere? 50, 51. That's not even one of ours, it's someone else's. 50, here's 50, 58 right here. We're off officially back on the road after Truck World. Going straight to America. Got a cross down at Pembina, North Dakota. I'm already cleared to cross there, so they're expecting me. Head on over to Thief River Falls. They're not sure if they're gonna live offload me. There's a chance that they'll, uh, what that means is they'll unload me when I'm there. When uh, truck drivers say that they're gonna live, get live unloaded or live loaded, that means they're gonna load me while I'm hooked up to the trailer right there and then. If that's not a possibility today, I'm gonna drop this trailer there and bobtail back. That's the plan. I don't make the plan, I just execute the plan. That's my job. That's our job as truck drivers, right? We get a plan given to us, we execute the plan. Professionally, flawlessly, and with style. At least we try to, right? Execute it with pride, do your job with pride. This is Highway 59 South. I gotta find a way to get over to Highway 75. I'm pretty sure our spring road restrictions are still in effect. So I can't take the 210 or whatever this road is here, 206, whatever that road is there, uh, that goes through St. Adolph. That is restricted, I'm loaded. I'm pretty sure I'd still be legal because it's 90% restriction. And I'm not very heavy. I've only got about like 10,000 pounds in the box. So I'd probably be legal, but you know, I'm gonna try to avoid getting pulled over and like, the mobile scales and stuff just to get let go whatever avoid that 
We're gonna go down to Highway 23 south of St. Pierre Jolie. That road doesn't have any restrictions in spring. That'll take me through to Morris, Manitoba on the 75. From Morris, we'll stop at Timmy's. Actually, no, we'll wait for, for on the way back. I have a coffee here, I forgot. I brought my coffee from home. We're gonna save our money and drive past Timmy's and head down into the United States of America. And we're gonna go up to the window and promise to be very, very good. I usually don't have a problem crossing there. I cross there often enough that they know me. And plus all of my information pops up on their screen when I get to the window, so. Before I even get to the window, they already know who I am and what I'm doing, where I'm going, but they're gonna ask me those questions just to corroborate. It's good to be back trucking. I tell you what, this is what makes me most happy, trucking right here. At Truck World, there's a lot of suits. Suits walking everywhere, you know what? That's good, that's awesome. We need suits to, to keep things running and stuff in the office, right? But I'm definitely not a suit. I'm a blue collar boy. I like being out here working, getting my hands dirty, driving, burning diesel fuel, hearing the hum of the tires. That's where I'm happy. The lineup is all the way back here. All the way up there around there, you see that, uh, I guess the fisheye lens is sort of distorts everything. Uh, US border and customs is way out there, probably about a mile up. Close to a mile up, yeah. And we got a long lineup of trucks here. There must be a little bit of a backup there. Maybe I came in the middle of a rush, or maybe they, uh, sometimes when they're on shift change at the border, uh, they'll shut down everything while the customs border agents uh, change shifts and stuff. And they do it pretty quick. It's not like they take forever. They do it pretty quick, but sometimes in that short amount of time that it takes to switch them out and bring on the next shift, uh, there's a long backup, long lineup right away, because a lot of freight moving back and forth between Canada and the United States. Billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. The United States is definitely our largest trading partner. Well, because they're right here, and also we're very close. Canada and the US are like BFFs for life, best friends forever. We're actually not best friends, we're actually brothers and sisters. We're brother nations. Two brothers from the same mother. The only difference is, for those of you not from North America, the only difference, political, there's a lot of differences that are small, right? But the two biggest differences between Canada and the United States is, uh, the United States gained their independence and fought for their independence in 1775. In Canada, we stayed loyal to the Crown of England, which is where we're called the Loyalists. So the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, is our queen here in Canada still. She is Queen of Canada, sovereign of the nation, head of state. And in the US, just over there, their president is the head of state. They don't have a monarch. They have a constitutional republic. Up here in Canada, we have a constitutional monarchy. So we each have our own constitution. They're both very similar. The only big difference between the two is that the United States has the right to bear arms. Uh, whereas in Canada, that's not enshrined into our constitution, unfortunately. Uh, so that's, that's the only big difference in our constitutions. We still both have freedom of assembly, freedom of speech built into our constitution. Whether or not the government on both sides of the border uh, adheres to that all the time, that's another story for another vlog channel. Not here, but uh, it is in our constitution. In Canada, we have our own, US has their own. You hear about it a lot in the US because they're very proud and protect their constitution very, very diligently. Same thing up here, We just you just don't hear from us, man. We're like the quiet neighbor. Like the quiet brother, you know? We're the quiet brother and the US next door, he's the loud brother, you know? Everybody knows him, he's the popular guy. He's the school jock, like the, the football player, you know? He's got big muscles and everybody likes him. Whenever he walks into a room, everybody goes, ooh, America's here. And then we walk in right beside them and they're like, who's that? He, Oh, there's his, there's, there's his little brother, that's nice. America! 
<laughs> so we're very close. Our militaries are very intertwined. We have uh, combined defense across North America and our Air Force and all other military. Uh, last week we had military vehicles and troops on our soil in New Brunswick, I believe, training with us. So they come here all the time, train with us. We go there, train with them. And we work sort of as a single unit. Two separate countries, but we work very closely together. Okay, an attack on one is an attack on the other. Sort of like, you know, like NATO, sort of. But this, we're very close, yes. That's what I'm trying to say. That is gonna be a long wait, I think. Ah, bye. Ah, bye. We made it through, the good people let us in. Here's the sign as evidence. North Dakota, be legendary. Remember that, I always remind you, is if you come to North Dakota, that's the one thing they ask. Be legendary. It's on their sign. Minnesota is right there. On the other side of those trees, that's a river right there. That's the Red River. I'm going to go into Pembina here and go over the Red River into Minnesota. And we're going to head down to Thief River Falls, Minnesota. The port of entry that I have to go through is just on the North Dakota side. That's why we're here. North Dakota is a beautiful state, though. It really is. I bug them about their slogan, be legendary, but you know... It may look boring and flat here on the west side of the state, but you go to the east side, you start getting into those hills. It's beautiful. Beautiful. It's a beautiful state. Anyone living here should be proud to, proud to be from North Dakota. Okay, and I understand the rest of the states always forget that you exist. I understand because I'm from Manitoba. Where I'm from, all of the rest of the provinces in Canada forget that we exist too. But you and I... Manitoba and North Dakota, we both know each other exist. We got each other's backs. Flyover states, unite. Right? We got you. People may not want to come here touring all the time, but that's okay with us, right? That's okay, we like the peace and quiet, we like the open space. Just a bunch of peaceful farmers and truckers. Leave us alone, we'll leave you alone. Right? Make sure you come to a complete stop. You don't... Know, I promised I'd be good. Okay? gas tracks here real quick I'm gonna uh, use their facilities here for a second so I'm gonna go right down that way around town and down uh, old highway 75 but first it's the first truck stop into the United States from Manitoba and they get quite a bit of business here it's usually quite busy oh yeah oh Yep, potholes. That's okay, I forgive you, because Winnipeg's potholes are worse. Believe me. Ah! I just about got, like, thrown into another dimension driving through Winnipeg on the way back from the airport the other day. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. The state of the roads in Winnipeg right now are... There's no words to describe them. You have to bring a helmet, okay? So I've dropped off my trailer in Thief River Falls, and I'm on my way back, Bob. Tailing right now. No trailer behind me. And I finally got the opportunity now to stop in Carlstad, Minnesota. I want to check out these Matrax tracks or whatever these track systems that they make here. Remember how we talk about them when we go through here? They make them here. And I want to go in and take a look at them. Remember they had that smart car with tracks parked on the side of the road? This is where we're at now. They don't got the smart... Oh, it is there still! Yes! That's awesome. Okay, look at this thing. So this is what they make here. Matrix. And I guess they work on any vehicle, right? Even smart cars. 
<laughs> Look at this. Own a smart car? No problem, Matrix got you covered. Who needs a snowmobile? Take this thing to work and then take it into the bush right after. Can you go down the highway with these things, I wonder? I mean, it's, it's plated. That means it's registered and licensed, right? Is that legal to take it down the highway with the tracks? I wonder, right? You can get the tracks for these side-by-sides too. This is a Can-Am. This is a Canadian brand made in Quebec from Bombardier. But those mattresses are all American made. Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe Can-Am is Canadian, right? I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's from Quebec. And then you got a Hummer H1 here. I wonder why the tracks on the bottom come out so far like that. I guess just to go underneath the body, right? That would make sense, yeah. Look at that thing. I wonder how much they want for this. Think it's for sale? Dollars. It's probably worth a lot more than that. I'm just joking. That's a real H1 Hummer. This thing's worth probably like 100 grand. Super cool, eh? We're just over the border back into Canada now. And remember how I said it was all Ukrainian settlements as soon as you get over the Canadian border? We're into the first Canadian town, the border town, inside Canada. And this is Tolstoy. And right here is the Tolstoy Ukrainian National Home. And you can see on the flagpole up ahead there, there's a Ukrainian flag. The wind has got it all twisted up on the on the pole there. And uh, over here, the general store. It's got a Ukrainian flag flying up there. Canada flag down below on the bottom right. This is all Ukrainian settlement. So here, the next town up, and pretty much all the way up Highway 59 here, is all Ukrainian settlement until you get up to uh, St. Malo, uh, where it then turns into French settlements. And you go through the French settlements and you get to Hanover Municipality, which is where I hail from. The Germans and the Dutch, together we have built a great land right between the rivers because the French settled along the rivers, right? In the inland part where Steinbeck is in Winkler, that was the Mennonite Reserve, the East Reserve that was reserved for us for our exclusive use by the Crown. And uh, later on they took that uh, away from us, but that's a story for a different time. Some of us are a little, that, that's a different part of history. We'll talk about it another time. <laughs> but Steinbeck was the East Reserve uh, for the Mennonites and the Germans and Dutch Mennonites, right? And then, come down here you get our Ukrainian friends so Manitoba has a deep connection to Ukraine uh, this is just one of many this is a small town but uh, Canada especially Manitoba here has the largest population of Ukrainians outside of Ukraine and since the whole conflict out there has started and since the war has started out there and their country got invaded many millions of them have fled as refugees and many, many of them have come here to Canada and many have landed at our airport in Winnipeg. And when I was traveling uh, to Toronto, there was a big sign there with the Ukrainian flag in our airport and said, welcome Ukrainians. So uh, personally here right now, I want to welcome Ukrainians here to Manitoba in Canada. If you're here in Manitoba and you've been fleeing the war in your home country, first of all, I'm glad you're safe and I hope all of your loved ones made it out as well and if you have any loved ones back there fighting uh, we pray for them and hope the best for them every day and we hope for victory but I welcome you here to Canada there are many of your fellow Ukrainians here already and we're blessed to have you here with us so enjoy your stay here and uh, have some Tim Hortons Enjoy the full Canadian experience. Go see a hockey game and go play in the snow because we still have snow and it's uh, April. So I'm sure you're itching to get back home and rebuild as soon as you can. So until that day comes, enjoy your stay. I can't imagine having bombs falling down in your home region. Like 
living here in town, I look outside of like, can you imagine just one day you're just living your life and then the next day is like <laughs> everything's blowing up all around you and you have enemy tanks coming into your town and like firing indiscriminately blowing up apartment buildings blowing up houses you got soldiers coming up to your house here stealing your tv and for some reason they're stealing people's washing machines and stuff and just tying people up and shooting them and can you imagine so i feel for them and so if they end up here at our airport, absolutely. I, I welcome them into our community. I hope they have a nice stay, and I know that uh, they're gonna wanna head back when this is all over and rebuild. So, uh, enjoy your stay, have a cup of Tim Hortons, don't forget, okay? Go see a Winnipeg Jets game if, you, if you're able to. Uh, at the very least, I hope you find uh, comfort here, because you're safe, you're safe here. This is a very safe area of the world, that's, that's why we're here. <laughs> Thanks for tagging along with me today, everybody. Tomorrow's another day of trucking. I hope you join me. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget, hit that like button. A lot of you always forget. It does help me a lot with the algorithm. And if you want to leave me a nice comment down below, go for it. If not, it's your choice. I still like you. I still welcome you back tomorrow. <laughs>